Okay, so we are going to fully style my hair today. If you wanna see what my hair looks like unstyled when it's air dried with no product, you can check out my story and you can see it there. In the meantime, uh, we're gonna really get things underway at 11, which is in five minutes, uh, but you can see I've got to detangle. <laughs> I actually washed my hair two days ago, but I didn't style it because I don't feel like styling it. So what I'm going to, I just like put it up in a messy bun for two days. So what I'm gonna do now is fully, or what I just did this morning was fully saturate my hair. Now I'm gonna detangle with a little bit of leave-in conditioner. So some of you might know, hey Hill, how's it going? Oh my God, we need a little countdown to when we're gonna hang out. Wait, how many days is it? Two weeks. Two weeks, is it? Anyways. Um, one second. I don't feel like I need this anymore. I feel like my hair has stopped dripping. And I feel like I'm going to tie this around my waist. Um, so, I took... I did a thing. I took a course. I know I'm so stoked. By the way, I did mean that. I do kind of like have a busy schedule while I'm in Toronto, but I did mean that about if you want to film your hair routine uh, in the hotel. In particular, on the Monday, the person that I'm staying with is not going to be there, I don't think. I think she's going to be out running errands. And I think there's going to be a break of like three hours in between my appointments. So if you did want to use the bathroom to film a hair routine, I don't see why that would be a problem. Um, okay, so now I, okay, what I was gonna say is I took a wash and go class. Your girl's trying to learn. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn things. I feel like I've got like a responsibility to you guys to like keep learning. Cause as you know, I'm not a hairstylist. All I really know is how to style my own hair, which I'm getting pretty good at. Yes, I do style other people's hair for fun, but I am not a specialist. I am not a curly hair specialist. I am not a hairstylist. Maybe one day, but not right now. Um, I just really like to do my own hair. Uh, Hill, well, having a second person there might help bring a bikini and hopefully it'll work in the bathroom at this. Once I get, check into the hotel, I'll tell you what the bathroom looks like. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, I, so I took this wash and go class. It was with Curly Gal Clo. If you don't follow her already, she is a Manchester curly hair specialist. She is actually a hair stylist and she specializes in curly hair. Um, you should definitely follow her. If somebody could drop her name in one of the comments, Curly Gal Clo. She's awesome. I love her content. Uh, I've learned so much. She is all about really like simplifying and stripping it back, which you guys know I'm not always the best at. Sometimes my routines are a little bit complicated. I try to like have lots of beginner routines on here, but sometimes I make it complicated because I do like to do hair. It is a hobby for me, so I'm not constantly trying to make it as simple as possible. That's what she does. She's like, let's use one product. Like she's like stripping it back. She does a lot of tight curls. She does a lot of type three, type four hair. However, she absolutely still does type two hair. And I took her wash and go class. That was this past Sunday. I think she is going to be doing another one. I don't know how much it was, maybe like 50 bucks, something like that. And it was like a full live where she went through and shampooed, conditioned and styled this girl's hair. And, you know, I learned a lot of stuff in this class that challenged some of the things that I have talked to you guys about on this channel before. I'm going to get started um, as we're closing in 11. This is a local auto company. It's the leave-in that I'm going to use today, Curly Hair Designs. By the way, this is not a sponsored live today. My last live was sponsored by Less Brands. Thank you, Less Brands, but today is not sponsored. We're just using whatever. We're just kind of fun. really back to freestyling. Um, thank you. It's without the E at the end. Curly gal clo without the E at the end, I think. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, this is linked in my bio if you want to support a local Ottawa hair salon. This is their product. Curly Hair Designs Leave-In Coconut Milk Conditioner with Carrot and Castor Oil. Um, it smells really nice. It's a little bit sweet, the scent, so it's not unscented. You can see it's nice and light. Um... I used it when I did my like cottage hair routine and I like straight up didn't have conditioner. I'm doing good, Sophie. How are you? Um, and okay. So anyway, so I took this 
wash and go class and definitely learned a couple of things that challenged what I previously thought about hair products and about hair. Gonna share some of those things with you, but I have to give full credit to Curly Gal Clo. And I also want to like go on record with say, this is not always consistent with all the things I've talked about before. I am learning. I am really making a big effort to learn a lot about hair right now, to work with some curly hair specialists, to expand my knowledge, um, to be more accountable to you guys. And that means that sometimes I'm gonna contradict myself over the next couple of months, years, as my knowledge expands, as I start to learn more. But that also means you're always gonna get the most up-to-date knowledge of what I know. And I'm not afraid to correct myself. I'm not afraid to be like, I used to think this and now I think this. As you know, if you've been following me for a while, I will often be like, guys, 10 seconds ago I did that. I've just learned something and I don't think that anymore. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna go through and like gently detangle my hair because it is feeling a little bit tangled right now just because I did wash it two days ago. Um, like I said, put no product in, let it air dry, put it up in a messy bun for two days and just wet it this morning. I sometimes do that uh, just to like make sure that I can style my hair for today for our live. Um, okay, so we're just gonna put a little bit. So it's one of these things that I learned from the, the wash and go virtual workshop that I did with Curly Gal Clo was she feels that if you properly wash, shampoo and condition your hair, you don't need leave-in conditioner. She says, Leave-in conditioner is to conditioner. What dry shampoo is to shampoo. Does that not blow your mind? That just like, it made, it made me, it made my noggin think. It really made me reflect. So, and on a day like today where I haven't washed my hair in two days and I need to detangle, um, it makes a lot of sense to pull out a leave-in conditioner because it's gonna help me, you know, detangle my hair because I washed my hair two days ago, whatever, it'll help add a little bit of smoothness, make it easier to detangle. So, um, yeah, so if I don't apply leave-in conditioner, my hair doesn't curl well, exactly. So the whole point being, we need to be properly shampooing and conditioning our hair. And that's not to say we're not gonna use any styling products, okay? That's not her point. Her point is specifically around leave-in conditioner. Now, there's gonna be some exceptions to this in my opinion, <laughs> but again, I am not a stylist and I reserve the right to change my opinion as I continue to learn. And that is, I think, when people's hair is really damaged and still healing and you're kind of putting Band-Aids on your hair. Um, and I think during that process where your hair is really struggling, Sometimes you just gotta kind of layer stuff on there to try and get through. But her point is when you learn how to properly shampoo your hair, so you're learning how to properly remove buildup and you're using shampoos that are not damaging your hair, you're using shampoos that are actually allowing your hair to absorb moisture and maybe even adding moisture to your hair. Um, uh, uh, Live description, isn't your hair, is there a description guys? You mean the live title? Um, I consider my hair live, uh, wavy, not curly, but it's just like, we probably just define wavy versus curly differently. It's not, it's just difference of definition. Um, so, um, what was I saying? The, Oh yeah, so you wanna make sure you're shampooing, so you wanna be using, yeah, yeah, so you wanna shampoo properly. She, when she does a like shampoo in her salon for like a shampoo, like a, a curly hair treatment, she, oh sorry, someone on Instagram says, was just gonna say that, mine is exactly like that, even with CGM approved products. So um, when she's doing her treatments, she does a clarifying shampoo first. She really makes sure to work it through from kind of root to tip, um, not so much focusing on the scalp, but really on the strands of hair. And then she goes in with a moisturizing shampoo afterwards, really working it through even in sections to make sure that the hair has been fully cleansed. So clarifying shampoo, rinse. Moisturizing shampoo, rinse. And then she goes in with a good quality conditioner. 
You found me right on time, Val. I love it. Best pedicure color for guys. I don't know. Whatever color you want. That's like saying best pedicure color for girls. You can't pick. Depends on your style. Um, you cut your hair off. Ah! Do you love it? That's exciting. I love a good change. Yeah, you can definitely ask questions, Ilona. I, I don't know how to say your name. Ilona? Iona? Um, so, I'm so glad, Val, that the method has been working for you. Um, so, when you're conditioning, let's talk about conditioning then. I'm sorry, my brain's a little tired today, guys, so I'm going to keep losing my train of thought. I find that brushing or playing with my hair after washing makes it frizzy. Yeah. Okay, I need to stick to one thought so that there's actually something for people to watch on this live. <laughs> So when you're conditioning, so then Curly Galco was talking about when you're conditioning your hair, you want to use a good quality conditioner that's silicone free. You want to really work it into your hair. She feels that conditioning is a verb, like you really need, you can't, there's no point in just like applying conditioner to your hair and letting it sit. You need to work it into your hair. So often that means apply it overall to all of your hair and then split it into sections and work it through, maybe work it through with your fingers first, then with a brush, then add more water to your hair, maybe even a little bit more conditioner if necessary, and really work, like scrunch the product until you work up like a milky froth or a lather, um, depending on your curl texture will kind of impact what type of like reaction you get, but you really wanna work it so that those moisture loving ingredients are having a chance to truly attract that moisture. Um, brush from the middle, oh, sorry, am I detangling incorrectly? <laughs> uh, yeah, you miss your long hair, yeah, it can be tough. You're right, you should absolutely detangle from the bottom and work your way up. I really love the Lust Brands conditioner. I also love the Curl Smith Shine conditioner. Uh, it, you're absolutely right. It is better to start lower, especially when I'm sitting here talking about good technique. <laughs> it's because I'm multitasking. Um, so, uh, yeah, so you really want to work up that lather when you're conditioning your hair. When you do those two steps properly, so you shampoo properly and then you condition properly, your hair is going to be properly moisturized already. And then you shouldn't need to go then in and add another layer of moisture with your leave-in conditioner. Your hair should be properly moisturized from having properly shampooed and properly conditioned. And that was Curly Gal's clothes. She is, or that was her whole point with this wash and go. It's not that you don't need styling products. You're definitely still going to need styling products, but you probably won't need a leave-in conditioner. Now, when a leave-in conditioner is going to be very helpful is when you're going to be um, like wanting to detangle your hair maybe a few days after wash day or at a different point like what I'm doing today and you just want a little bit of help with slip, uh, with detangling, something like that. Um, so there's still a, certainly a role for leave-in conditioner, but it might not necessarily be like a, a absolutely reach for it every time. Now, conflicting to this, did you say anything about how often you should do these steps or if you have dry scalp, will this help or hurt it? So properly shampooing and conditioning. So she clarifies and then she uses a moisturizing shampoo when she uses not every wash day. She only clarifies once every four to six weeks which I thought was interesting. That's less frequently than I've heard recommended in the past. Um, but when she uses the moisturizing shampoo, she's careful to like put the moisturizing shampoo on the scalp and she feels that that really helps with the scalp. Um, there's also, personally, for my dry scalp, I like to use the uh, Lust Brands Healthy Scalp Serum. I don't know. That's, I use that almost every day on my scalp and I find it really helps. Uh, the last blow dry for Christmas. So exciting. Uh, if you use that much conditioner, it would just be weighed down. So conditioner gets rinsed out of your hair. If you're using the right conditioner for your hair, it shouldn't be weighing down your hair. Also, it's not about using that much conditioner. You're using a, a normal amount of conditioner. You're using a lot of water to work it into your hair. It's not about using a ton of conditioner into your hair. Um, so kind of switch how you think about that a little bit and that should help. 
Uh, okay, so my hair's not as wet as I would like it to be, so I'm just gonna fill this up with water. I am sitting in water, which I hate. Somebody asked a question, what's the moisturizing shampoo still apply if you have oily scalp? So once we're getting into questions like that, that's a really good question. I just want to remind everybody, I'm not a curly hair specialist. What happened is I attended a wash and go uh, class from curly gal, virtual class from curly gal Clo, who you should all go follow. Please drop her name in the comments. Uh, you should all go follow her. She's amazing because she will be doing more virtual workshops. And I heard she's actually going to be doing one for waves and looser curls soon. So you, I'm going to promote it. So because I just think we should all attend. So like definitely when we're getting to would a moisturizing shampoo still apply if you have oily scalp questions like that are going to be better suited for a hairstylist or a curly hair specialist. I truly don't know. I'm not trained in that sort of thing. I would just be taking an educated guess. Um... Clarifiers, what is a clarifying shampoo? A clarifying shampoo is for removing buildup for your hair. It's also good for keeping a healthy scalp. What is buildup? Buildup can be from um, environmental factors. It can be from like mineral water, from hard water, even soft water can start to build up on your hair over time. Things like silicone, certain ingredients in your products, thank you Ruby, can start to build up on your hair over time. So uh, buildup just like starts to build up on your hair so and creates a barrier on your hair so your hair stops being able to receive moisture. Over time that can cause your hair to become less curly. It can cause your hair to get feel dry because it's no longer taking on moisture. Um, so we just want to be able want to make sure we're removing buildup periodically. Now sulfate is going to remove buildup but it's very very harsh. Some wavy like some people with hair like ours use sulfates with success. I just want to say that. I want to say that. I know it's a controversial opinion. Some people with hair like ours use sulfates with success. I personally don't. I don't think you need to. Um, I think there are some, like I like to do a combination of a clarifying shampoo, occasional use of a clarifying shampoo with a more gentle, like regular shampoo. I really like the Lust Brand shampoo because it's very cleansing, um, but it's not sulfates. <laughs> um, and then sometimes I use slightly more gentle shampoos even than that. Uh, what's a good shampoo and conditioner? I love the Last Blend Shampoo and Conditioner. It's a very cleansing shampoo, but it's not a clarifying shampoo. It's not a sulfate shampoo, uh, but it's gentle and it's very moisturizing. And the conditioner I love, great slip to it. Um, other shampoo and conditioners that I love, the Shine shampoos by Curl Smith that, that are fragrance free, if you're looking for something fragrance free, but the Lust ones you can get fragrance free as well. Uh, so you know how scrubs exfoliate your skin and help remove dead skin cells and dirt? Yeah, totally. Uh, clarifying shampoo can do that. Um, I use loads of conditioner. Now I feel like not enough. Yeah, you don't need to use loads of conditioner. It's not like you need to saturate your hair in conditioner. You need to use pretty much the same amount of conditioner you've always used. You need to use loads of water. Lots of water. And then once you use loads of water, if you don't feel any conditioner anymore, just use a touch more conditioner and work it up. Yeah, find a balance. Uh, oils, which are good for curly hair. That's a tough question. Um, because it's like, how are you using the oils? Uh, like not everybody needs to use oils on their hair at all. Really? Like you might get enough oils just by using a good moisturizing shampoo. This is another thing that Curly Gal Clo was talking about. Like I really learned so much guys. And like, if you think I know a lot, trust me, I don't compare it to a curly hair specialist, but if you think that I know a lot about wavy or curly hair, take one class, one of these like virtual workshops with one of these curly hair specialists. Like I really challenge you to do that because you'll be mind blown how much you learn. I was mind blown. Uh, like one of the things she talked about is like this shine serum that we use to break the cast. Yes, people with like looser waves and curls like ours sometimes need to do it. If you have tighter curls, you probably don't need to because it's actually better to leave the cast for the first day if you have tighter curls um, because you get it, it helps you get like seven days out of your style. So which oils are good for curly hair? I mean, it, it depends on a lot of factors. I personally don't really use oils on my hair. Um, I, when I do, I like to use really, really light ones. Uh, like I use the Garnier Fructis Sleek and Shine Anti-Frizz Serum on my hair sometimes because it's a really light one, but it does contain silicones, which I know a lot of people don't like to use. Um, I don't know. I might move away from that one eventually. 
because of the silicones, but I do like it because it's very light. Um, uh, any advice for paper thin curly hair? You know, there is one girl who's got very thin, fine hair and does a great job of styling it. Carmen, is that her name? Cameron, Cameron Curls with a Y, C-A-M-R-Y-N. I would definitely follow her. Started making sulfate free shampoo bars. My hair loves it. I love shampoo bars. Oh my God, I haven't used one in ages, but I absolutely love them. No raw oils, yeah. I don't use raw oils at all. Build up, yeah, you definitely can get build up from raw oils. Okay, let's get started, guys. You guys are really a lot of questions today. Sometimes I have this many people and not this many questions. So lost on how to do your hair? Well, you're in the right place. I know that sometimes my TikTok is easier to navigate than my Instagram because I have so many playlists which can make it easier. But I think on both TikTok and Instagram, I think I have a high, uh, for sure on TikTok, I have a playlist called Intro to Wavy Hair. And so far it only has one video in it, but there is going to be at least five or six videos in that series that tells you exactly what you need to know to get started with your wavy hair. And it's a lot of it's gonna to apply to curly hair too, but it's targeted to people who have hair like mine that has curl that doesn't quite start at the root and curl that has, or spirals that has a tendency to fall out over the course of several days. Um, it might be spirally, but it just has a tendency to loosen as opposed to spirals that are going to stay nice and spirally no matter what happens. Um, so I, on, if you're just on Instagram, I might have it as a highlight, but if I haven't added it as a highlight yet, I will try and do that after this live. Hi from India. Um, uh, but anyways, that intro to wavy hair video is a really great place to start. But anyways, if I haven't saved it as a, um, if I haven't saved it as a highlight, it's in my last like 20 videos. So if you just like scroll through my reels, you're going to see it. So what we're doing today, let's talk, let's get started. We've been live for 17 minutes and I haven't started yet. You guys have a lot of questions today. I love it. Oh, it's so nice to have like an engaged group. Okay. So we have, uh, I just like wanted to do something I haven't done in a little while. So we're going to do something a little different. I wanted to do mousse and I usually don't like to do mousse on its own because mousse on its own, I don't get longevity out of. So I wanted to do mousse plus a little bit of gel. Um, my favorite gel is the Irish sea moss gel. So we're going to do a very small amount of the Irish sea moss gel. Uh, like, can you do a routine? Yes. The routine we're doing today, uh, is one that you could do Aluna if you recently found out your hair is wavy. Um, but I've got tons of hair routines that you can check out. Uh, you can also go to like my Pinterest or my YouTube and like check out a bunch of full hair routines. Okay, so we're going to add some John Frida, Frida. There's three mousses that I really like. This is one of them, the John Frida Frizz Ease. It's a nice like drugstore mousse. I don't know, I haven't tried a lot of mousses, but the three that I have tried are all drugstore mousses. And I like them, they're good. Are all mousses not giving longevity because my curls never seem to last and you use mousse? In my experience, yes. It's a strong smell to the John Frida, but it smells nice. It's not like bad. Um, are all mousses not giving longevity? Yeah. In my experience, mousse is going to give you more longevity than a foam will but uh, it's not gonna give you the longevity that a gel will. And that's why a lot of wavies and curlies use gels. Gel is going to be probably the most universally used product, hands down. The most over-marketed product is curl creams. Curl creams are straight up for a very narrow demographic. Curl creams are meant for people who are not particularly looking for definition. They're looking more for just really hydrated, uh, touchable definition and longevity just isn't really the main goal. That's not to say you can't get definition and longevity um, out of curl creams. You can, but often you have to use quite a bit of them and it starts to compromise volume in order to use enough. Um, and you're just not going to get longevity. So like some people who really like curl creams are people who like to brush out their curls. Curl creams can be great for those people or women who like to wear afros. Curl creams can be great for them or a foam could be great for them. So, um, mousses do not, as a rule, there might be individual exceptions, but, uh, is that silicone free? 
I don't know. I believe so. Yep. John Frieda looks like it's silicone free. Um, yeah, guys, most of my audience, most of my audience, I would say 60% of my audience, when I scroll through your profiles, you guys, a lot of you have hair that has maybe some spirals and some S waves. Some of your spirals do not start at the root. Your hair has a tendency in some areas to not spiral as nicely as it does in other areas. You've got some, some stubborn areas that doesn't like to curl as well as some other areas. Um, your curl has a tendency to lose its bounce over the course of several days, okay? <laughs> that describes at least 60% of my audience when I like scroll through like and look at your profiles, that's what I see. And so for that group of people, I'm not saying you can't. Did, does anybody feel called out by that description, by the way? <laughs> Just out of curiosity. When, if that describes you, you can use curl creams. I'm not saying you can't. You might even like the results you get from curl creams. But likely curl creams aren't the best product for you. And it's probably an unnecessary step. You can probably get just as good results not using curl creams at all. You can probably use, pro yes, yeah, so I'm getting a lot of people on Instagram being like, definitely me. I've only been using curl cream and diffusing. I've been quite happy, but I'm deaf trialing mousse now. So mousse is one of the things I try. It's not the only thing. One of my favorite hair routines is gel only. I'm not doing that today because I was just wanting to see if I could get like a really voluminous, like a big hair day today. Um, but one of like the simplest, easiest hair days that I do is a gel only hair routine. And it probably lasts better than any other hair routine. Still gives me really good volume. So if you're a beginner, that's like probably what I would recommend is starting with a gel only hair routine or an all-in-one too, can be nice if you're, hair, if you're really struggling with hydration with your hair. What about AG Recoil, would that be heavy? I, I, can't, I think I used to use AG Recoil when I was young, but I, I'm not exactly sure. I can't picture in my head what the consistency is, so I can't, um, I can't really properly answer that. Would that be heavy? Yeah, like I'm not exactly sure. Is it like a butter, like in your hand? Is it like butter or is it like milk? Like what kind of consistency is it? Started using a protein curl cream to get my hair hydrated and then switched to a gel. Yeah. What gel do you recommend in terms of hold? Hands down, the Irish Sea Moss Gel by Lus. I am completely obsessed with it because even though it's a gel, it's very hydrating. It is going to not leave your hair stringy. So I just added the mousse everywhere, guys. And then what I'm going to do is add a little bit of gel all over. I'm gonna water it down in my hands first. Um, this is something else that, uh, Curly Gal Clo talked about. Anytime you add a moisture loving product to your hair, this is going to blow your mind because it blew my mind. Anytime you add a moisture loving product to your hair, you want to add water in your hands and in your hair first so that it gets all of the water that it wants from like actual water that you're adding and it doesn't start to try and continue to pull water from the environment once your hair is fully styled. I didn't know that like could work like that. So like glycerin, for example, when you're using products with glycerin, you want to add it to your hair when your hair is dripping like really, really, really wet. Doesn't that make so much sense? I don't know if that's right, but it sounds right. That's what, and she's a curly hair specialist. So like it made sense to me. <laughs> so anyways, I don't, I, the Irish sea moss gel feels very hydrating on my hair. I don't know if there's glycerin in it, but I'm following that logic here. There's Irish sea moss, there's aloe. I don't know. Yeah, there's glycerin. It's one of the last ingredients though. Got your daughter's order from the live last week. So exciting. Curly Smith Hydro Jelly is amazing too. Amazing. Recoil is like a liquidy cream. Yeah, I haven't tried it, so I'm not exactly sure. 
Oh, thank you for the rose, W and M Bowman. Thank you so much, guys. By the way, if you find this valuable, definitely hit that follow button because we do go live every single Tuesday, and I love doing this. This is my favorite part of being a content creator. Um, but also, if you hit the double tap, that actually helps me so much. It's such a small thing, but it really does help. Thank you so much for your engagement, guys. Oh, I'm trying that next time I use gel. Adding water to my hand with the gel, it helps you really evenly distribute it. Such a great idea. You've been using the less line of products. Definitely water down the less products in your hands before you apply them to your hair. It really helps you evenly distribute those less products. I can't tell you what a difference that will make. And make sure you're applying it to nice wet hair. Do you think protein treatment can help with curls? That is a very specific question. I do have a guide about protein moisture that you can go download. It, if you go to the link in my bio and scroll to the bottom for free resources, it's there. That if you check that out, thank you for everybody who just liked the live, that helps so much. Um, so definitely go check that out uh, to help you figure out whether or not your hair would benefit from a protein treatment. But basically, I would say unless your hair is colored, bleached, damaged in some way, usually you wouldn't need a protein treatment. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to go through and brush style. So why am I brush styling? Why not just like add product to your hair and then start diffusing? You can, however, do you see how my hair is looking like a little bit, it's not bad, but it's like a little bit frizzy almost there's a little bit of lacking of definition so if it looks like this when it's wet it's going to this is going to kind of turn into frizz okay this is what a lot of beginners don't fully wrap their head around when they're first getting started my hair has always grown very quickly and very long it's just the nature of my hair i do take a like a multivitamin that has biotin in it that probably helps, um, but it's also probably somewhat genetic. So, so if it's colored and bleach, then I would talk to a hairstylist. Maybe your hair needs protein. It's possible, but I would start by just using some like, like maybe a deep conditioner that has some protein in it, or maybe a shampoo that has some protein in it. You probably don't need to jump straight into a full protein treatment because you can go into protein overload and that can also damage your hair. So like take baby steps and still read the guide. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go through and yeah. So the brush styling is very helpful. So we had that like hair that, uh, like kind of frizzy, like wet frizzy section that was going to turn into dry frizz if we go straight in with the diffusing. Okay. So here, the bottom level of my hair is the most spirally section of my head. So here, all I really want to do is make sure on soaking wet hair, I'm just going to brush through just to kind of clump it all together like that. Okay. If every time your hair, you use protein, it looks better then keep using protein to a certain extent. But just so you know, Estelle, it's a balance. You can go into overload. So at some point, if you keep using protein, your, your hair is going to start getting like tangled and brittle and start breaking. And that's a sign that you're, you're using a little bit too much. So you're just going to want to rein it back a little bit. Protein is a balance. It's not something that you can just always forever keep adding to your hair. You have to maintain a balance of it. Okay, so all I did guys was brush through. And do you see the difference? It's so subtle, but it's just like a little bit like chunkier little spirals. Just a subtle difference, but it will make a very big difference in the final result. Okay, so again, I'm, this is a Denman D4 brush. You can use the D3, you can use a paddle brush. Um, I'm just gonna go through like that. And then I'm just going through kind of with a rake. You can wait till the end to scrunch or you can scrunch now. You see what a difference that makes. Just that quick little brush styling. Now, you like this is going to take me a lot longer than it would take you guys because I'm taking a moment to like show you. I'm really sectioning it. You can take bigger sections, especially if you're just brushing through like this. Um, then you don't need to take as small sections. What products are necessary for the routine? Today I did use a leave-in conditioner, although if you properly shampoo and condition, 
uh, leave-in conditioner might not be strictly necessary. Uh, the leave-in conditioner is from a local Ottawa-based company, this uh, a salon called Curly Hair Designs. Uh, then I use the mousse, which is, I think, linked to my bio, John Frieda Frizz Ease. My dogs must have chewed on this because there's a bite mark in it. That's scary. And then the a little bit of the Irish Sea Moss Gel, and I might glaze a little bit more of the Irish Sea Moss Gel. Also linked to my bio, plus I have a discount code for that baby. Um, I usually do not add more product by day two. No. Okay, so now I'm going to add more water because I want to brush out nice, wet, saturated hair because it is easier to smooth the frizz. And again, it's curliest down here, so I'm not doing anything too crazy. I am literally just brushing the hair up and away from my head. Okay? Yes, that's going to smooth the curl on my hair. But for me, I just shake it out. And you can either wait till the end and scrunch it all at once at the end. That's it. Or you can scrunch it as you go. It's up to you. Now, if you don't have wet frizz, if your hair is really nicely clumping on its own, and you're like, I don't have that like stringiness that she's talking about. And then when I brush through, it gets rid of my curl pattern. And then I'm just scrunching it to bring it back. Why am I doing this? Don't do it. You don't need to. Not everybody needs to do this. Okay. When you wake up after day one, do you wet hair and add any product? Typically not. Um, usually after day one, my hair still looks great. I sleep with my hair in a silk scarf or in a sleep cap. And I wake up and just shake my hair out. Um, okay. There we go. So we're just gonna brush through. I kind of like to rake it through like that. Give it a little, give it a little shake. There we go. I'm not gonna like overly fuss about scrunching because at the very end, I'm gonna scrunch all over with my microfiber towel or a t-shirt towel. And again, for the underneath, if the least curly part of your head was the bottom, I would do brush curls underneath. Um, but for me, the least curly part of my head is the top. So I do brush curls at the top. You don't have to do that though. You don't have to do brush curls anywhere if you don't want to. Uh, brush curls is a technique that can help artificially kind of enhance how curly that section looks. It can make an S wave look a little bit more like a spiral. And that is one of the techniques I use to kind of even out a curl pattern to make my curl pattern look on top a little bit curlier. Um, so I don't bother to do brush curls all underneath here because all it's gonna do is create these really, really artificially large curl clumps that I'm then gonna have to go in and break up and it's just gonna be a lot of unnecessary work because the hair underneath here is just spiraling on its own and I don't need to do that. But on the top layer, the hair isn't doing those nice ringlets as well. Um, the ringlets really start much lower down. Brush curls can help the ringlet or the spiral start higher up, closer to the root. What are your thoughts on no scrunching that a lot of curly girls are doing. It depends on your hair pattern. Scrunching when you have like wavy hair can be really helpful, uh, like mine. Um, if you have cur true curly hair, you don't need to scrunch. It's probably just gonna create frizz. So it depends on your hair pattern. Uh, I normally just make spirals, twisting sections with my fingers. Is that wrong? Absolutely not. There are a million ways to skin a cat. <laughs> there are a million ways to skin a cat. Um, like you can twist sections with your fingers. Let's you can finger curl. Um, you can do whatever works for you, really. Uh, I just like to do this because I think it gives me kind of a natural looking curl on this bottom layer here and maintains my volume. If that works for you and you like the results you're getting, that's great. If you have a lot of frizz, you might want to try brush styling because one of the benefits of brush styling is when the bristles run through, it does tend to smooth the frizz. Okay, so we're going through. I think my hair is starting to... The one thing with mousse is your hair can get dry pretty quickly. Um, so one of the deciding factors of whether you want to use mousse or gel. So yes, gel is usually going to give you more longevity out of your style than mousse is. But one of the other things to consider is dry time. 
if you got t a toddler and you need to leave the house and you cannot leave the house with wet hair because it's February in Canada, whatever. So you need to leave the house and your hair needs to dry quickly and you realistically don't have time to like diffuse your hair or at least not diffuse your hair very long, you need a quick dry time. And gel is going to take a long time to dry in your hair. So you might be somebody that it makes sense, even though you're gonna get less longevity out of your style, it might make sense to use mousse or foam in your hair because mousse and foam tend to dry much, much, much more quickly. So there's a lot of deciding factors when it comes to choosing the products that are right for your hair. So for someone who needs their hair to dry really quickly, I would recommend using very light products and using probably like a mousse. What are some products you can use on your two-year-old? I mean, there's lots of curly hair lines for children. Um, I don't know, I've made videos about it in the past. I haven't tried any of them, so I can't speak like intelligently to whether or not they're good or not. Um, I think maybe Shea Moisture has one, uh, but you, there's also lots of fragrance-free lines, like Lust uh, Brands has a fragrance-free line if that's something that you're interested in trying. Um, Typically for really young kids, you just want to stick to really light products. Like often a leave-in conditioner for a two-year-old is more than sufficient. Um, like you, kids are going to ruin their, a two-year-old's going to ruin their hair anyways. So like I wouldn't spend too much time on their hair. You just want to make sure that their hair is being maintained, cleaned, probably use a conditioner, I would say, um, if it's very spirally. Um and then maybe just like a little bit of a leave-in conditioner or something like that, just to like, you know, a leave-in conditioner or like a little bit of a hair oil just to smooth any frizz. But you wanna keep it really simple for little kids. Uh, I finally ordered your first Lust product. You're so excited. Oh, that's so wonderful. You have a one-year-old and a three-year-old. Ah, so exciting. Would this work on long hair? Or would it weigh it down? Uh, yes, brushing through and then raking and just shaking absolutely works on long hair. Is that just water? Yes, I already have products in my hair. Um, so the scalp serum, the Healthy Scalp Serum by Less Brands. I love it. I use it almost every night on my hair. Out of curiosity, do you ever dice in your hair? No. Um, you have the air wrap. Uh, uh, I sometimes I do some heat style in my hair sometimes though. Okay, my density is like kind of a medium density. I see you're just brushing through and not using the brush to curl. What's the difference? Great question. So when you just brush through, all you're doing is smoothing the wet frizz and kind of like clumping the hair. So let me show you the difference. If you're finding this valuable, guys, don't forget to give me that double tap. Sending those likes really helps me so much and helps you show your appreciation if you do find this valuable. Okay, so we're going to hit that with a little bit of water. I like to work with nice wet hair because it helps the hair to clump. Right now, just as a reminder, I have the John Frieda Frizz Ease Mousse and a very small amount of the Love Your Curls Irish Sea Moss Gel. Both of those are linked in my bio, I think. Um, I keep my hair nice and saturated while I'm working with it. And all I really wanna do is make sure that I am smoothing any wet frizz and making sure the hair is nice and clumped. Ugh, I have a little bit of a tangle, one second. Don't use your Denman brush for detangling. That's not what it's meant for. Um, I like to switch to a detangling brush if I see there's a bunch of tangles. So let me just split this section up because it's a little bit too big. I'm gonna put that right there. Okay, we've got a smaller section here. So when I'm just gonna brush through like I've been doing, like typically you can call it uh, like ribbon curls or brushing with tension, just like a million names for it, but you wanna brush as close to the root as possible to smooth that root frizz, and you're just brushing through to the end, okay? So you're just kind of brushing through like that, and all you're doing is clumping the hair and smoothing any wet frizz. So you're not shaping the hair at all. You're just adding definition, smoothing the frizz and helping it to clump all in like one or just a few curls, okay? You can also take larger sections like what I've got here and do that again. And here it's going to break on its own probably into a few smaller curls but this is gonna give you a much more natural looking curl pattern than a brush curl will. A brush curl, you are like 
your, your kind of curl training is like the term people use to shape it into a spiral. When I have a larger section like this, I like to follow up the brushing with a bit of a raking action to break it into those curls um, and give her a little shake to revive the curl pattern. And then you can scrunch or you can wait till the end to scrunch the whole thing. But you can see like that's not shaping into a spiral. We're really just working with whatever S wave you naturally have. And it's going to look much more natural with the finished product. I tend to get more volume when I use this technique than when I use brush curls. Your last order arrived. I don't know, my last I ordered on your last live just arrived. Oh my God, so exciting. Can you use a regular brush? Yes, a regular powder brush can absolutely be used. Um, okay, so I'm going to, I think we're gonna go with a middle part today. So I'm gonna keep pulling from this side. I'll get to the front pieces in just a second. Um, your hair curls from the root, so it'll be a little bit different than mine because my hair does not curl from the root. So uh, we're gonna keep going with these larger sections. But actually, now that we're getting kind of to this top layer, you'll see I am going to switch, not quite yet. Once we get to this top section, I'm gonna switch to brush curls. So this is gonna be the last time I show you guys these kind of ribbon curls or brushing with tension. So this technique is gonna be specifically good for people who have those tighter curls that really do not need any curl training, any shaping. I don't like the term curl training, really, because it's misleading. But anyways, that don't need any extra shaping that the brush curls are gonna give. But it's just this, you're just smoothing that wet frizz it's breaking on its own into those clumps, right? And then for me, I need to shake to revive the curl. I also like to scrunch. Remember, we're getting less curly on my head as we go up. On some people, it gets less curly as you go down. But anyway, so now we're done with that technique. I now switch to a new technique once I get to the top section of my head. I also don't like to let my hair get too dry, okay? Because if my hair gets too dry, before I'm ready, it uh, first of all, I can lose volume. Also, um, I like to have a chance to get that final scrunch in where I encourage the curl pattern a little bit with my micro plop before I start diffusing and I just find that kind of affects the like finished product. It might be in my head. Anyways, that's what I do. I find it impossible to unclamp my hair. When I separate the curls, they clamp together after a while. So I think you're talking about separating curl clumps possibly you have to separate curl clumps while your hair is wet if you wait until separating the curl clumps until your hair is dry which is something that i used to do uh, they will always reform your curls have a memory however they dry is going to be how they want to keep shaping um so you'll see once i get into the brush curls now what i'm talking about so personally, I usually only do a few brush curls nowadays, and it's gonna be in my least curly sections. For me, it just happens to be that my most visible section is my, mo is my least curly section. So I do brush curls in my most visible least curly section. Um, let me just clip this out. I don't do brush curls at the back of my head because I don't care. <laughs> I don't care enough to do them. I just do more of this technique and I brush it straight away from my head. I do the raking. I give her a little shake. And I go straight back. And I see how I'm just smoothing that wet frizz so that we don't get that turning into dry frizz. And I'm kind of styling it up and away give her a little shake, and then in that final scrunch, that'll get scrunched. Your curly hair only looks good when wet. When it's dry, it gets bloated. I assume you mean like it loses its definition, maybe looks frizzy. That just means that you need to find the right products and the right routine and the right techniques. So you're in the right place. Okay, so now we are going to switch to brush styling only for this section of my hair. So you can see how much time that saves. I know I've been brush styling my hair forever and it feels like, oh my God, this must take you, take you ages. When I'm not live, everything we did up till now takes me eight minutes. Like it's, it's hard to believe, <laughs> like this does not take me a long time when I'm doing it on my own. Now look how big this section is. Whoa, I almost just fell. Okay, so it's not very big. Maybe like a finger worth of hair. 
I find that whatever size section I make, that is the size the curl is always gonna be. I'm even gonna make this smaller. And I like pretty small spirals on the top layer of my hair. I find it gives me more volume and makes things look more natural. So I like to just take an extra few minutes when I'm doing the front of my hair. It saves me a lot of time during my refreshes and I just prefer the overall result. And I just do small sections, okay? So I'm going to wrap it through the bristles one time. See how I switched to wrapping around the handle then? You only put it through the bristles one time, otherwise you will be cutting the brush out of your hair. That is my single best piece of advice. You don't need a demo brush to do this. You can absolutely do it with a lot of different types of brushes, including a regular paddle brush. Um, you also don't need to do this, especially not if you have naturally very spirally hair. But if your hair is like mine in certain areas and in certain areas it gets very S wavy or just struggles to hold its curl just in some spots on your head, it might be a nice technique just to make the curl in those areas last a little bit longer or look a little curlier in those areas, okay? Now, if you have no curl and you do this technique, it just won't hold. And if you air dry with this technique, it doesn't hold very well. You're much better off to try and diffuse afterwards in my experience. Okay, I'm just going to make sure it's nice and saturated. Okay, so again, I take these like quite small sections here because whatever size the curl is when I brush curl it, that is the size that it's going to keep on re wanting to reform into. Yeah, the spray bottles from Lust Brands, I think you can get them off Amazon too. I absolutely love it. I use it all the time I have three of them and one of them I keep with a little bit of product mixed into the water for refreshes. Uh, I have the Les Burns diffuser, I love it. I did use a Conair diffuser for a really long time with the Extava Black Orchid, sorry, uh, the Conair blow dryer with the Extava Black Orchid diffuser and I liked that too but the diffuser, the Les Burns one is better and faster to do my hair. The spray bottle is the Love Your Curls Les Burns spray bottle. It's just an infinity mister I think is what it's called. Okay, so water or Dem and D4 hairbrush at a downward angle, put it through the bristles one time. I'm gonna start rotating around the handle, okay? And then I just keep wrapping until the hair is about, you know, just running through the tips of the bristles are tips of the hair are running through the bristles, okay? And then I wrap it all the way up and then I'm going to start to unwind and then you like, I like to pull it through for the last little bit so that you curl the end of the curl as well. If you just unwind the last inch of the curl of the hair won't curl, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yay, Val, yeah, you were here earlier too. Uh, let's see. Use too much use mousse yesterday and you need to rewash today. Oh, that's no fun. Sometimes even just re-wetting your hair can water down the product enough. Some of your curls change curling direction in mid length. How can you treat that? Well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's nothing you need to do to treat that. Um, if you don't like it, brush curls very likely will just correct it because it over directs the curl. Um, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with your curl changing curl direction. It probably is just going to give you more volume and it's totally normal. Like your, our hair isn't meant to grow out of our head perfectly in perfect little spirals. Um, okay. So I'm going to take another section. You see how big these sections are? They're quite small. And that's just me because like, you know, I just want my hair to look nice. <laughs> I just, I, I like, I'm being a perfectionist right now. This was a weird thing to say. I wanted to look nice. What I meant was I'm being a perfectionist. I want like to have very predictable results. I want to have really easy refreshes and I want to have a little bit of volume on the top layer of my head. That's what I was trying to say. Do you let your hair air dry in its own or do you use something for that? No, I never let my hair air dry um, because my hair takes so long to air dry. So it gets really frizzy when it air dries because our hair is most prone to getting frizzy while it is drying, while it's still wet. That's when if your hair is wet and it gets disturbed, it creates frizz versus once your hair is fully dry and it gets disturbed, it's less likely to create frizz. So if you can cut your drying time down, you are less likely to create frizz. Does that make sense? So therefore, diffusing with good technique 
typically will result in less frizzy, more defined hair if that's one of your goals. Yes, you can do this with a lot of regular paddle brushes. How long does my full routine take if I'm not on a live? Uh, diffusing my hair usually takes between 30 and 45 minutes. Um, the routine before that I can do in about 15 minutes. Um, I, I mean, I can do it in five minutes. I've done it in five or six minutes before. <laughs> What products did you use before this? Uh, so I did use a leave-in conditioner today only because I washed my hair two days ago and added no product. So I was just re-wetting my hair and needed to detangle. Then I added the John Frieda uh, mousse. And then I added a little bit of the Irish Sea Moss gel just for some longevity. Okay, and we're almost done this side. You like my accent? Guess where I'm from? Some of you probably know. If you really, really know, don't guess. <laughs> Thank you so much for these fab tips. You're like a professor. Professor, Oh, you're so sweet. But remember, I'm not a hairstylist, guys. I only have experience on my own hair. Aw, you guys are so sweet. I'm sure you have videos of you not styling your hair and diffusing, but what does your wavy hair look like? Check out my story, my chems girl. Go check to, out my story on Instagram. I show, if you guys check out my story on Instagram or TikTok, um, after you join this live, you'll see what my hair looks like unstyled. I'm trying to do that right lately for my lives so that you can see what my hair looks like unstyled and have realistic expectations for what is achievable for your own hair. Yeah, I'm Canadian, you guys are right. <laughs> uh, what are the advantages of using a Denman brush? It's a very good quality brush. Uh, there's lots of tutorials online for how to use it. <laughs> it. No, really, it just has a very grippy back, which helps with the grip, but there are other brushes brushes that have grip. I, it has a nice, like, I don't know, it's just grippy, that's pretty much it, but there's other brushes that are like that too. Um. You guys are so sweet. Thanks for so much engagement. This is my best ever Instagram live. I've never had so much engagement from Instagram. So thank you for everybody who joined today. Uh, Cindy, if you are wetting it totally, why not wash it? Such a great question. So I washed my hair two days ago. Why would I not just wash it if I'm fully wetting it? I only wash my hair every like four or five days because my hair doesn't need to be washed. My scalp doesn't get greasy for at least four days. Um, my scalp doesn't get itchy. Uh, why would I wash it if it doesn't need to be washed, I guess? Like if I style it, when I fully wet my hair, I do massage my scalp a little bit when I wet it, which is going to break up some of the oil that builds up um, like at the scalp. So even just doing that, a lot of people undervalue how much just putting your hair under the faucet and like massaging your scalp, it's called water washing, how much that literally breaks up the buildup of oil at your scalp just a little bit. And that gives that the sebum a chance to like work its way down the shaft and naturally hydrate your strands. Um, so it's actually really good for your hair to do that. So I don't know, I just like, if you don't need to shampoo and condition, don't shampoo and condition your hair. Don't add you, first of all, and it's a waste of product. I guess that's, those are my reasons. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of product. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jasmine, I'm going live on Instagram and TikTok right now. Uh, but it was a very valid, Cindy, if that's felt dismissive, I didn't mean for it to. That was a very good question. That was just, how, that was how I feel about it. Kelly, you saw me in an advertisement yesterday. <laughs> Uh, do I brush style every wash day? No. Often, because I get better longevity out of the style when I brush style like this, um, I do find it lasts a really long time. I only brush style in this very top bang section. The whole rest of my head, I didn't brush style my hair. Um, but I do do it right here because this is the least kind of spirally section of my head. And it helps me get more longevity out of this section. It artificially enhances the pattern here. It makes naturally S wavy section look more spirally and it helps the ringlets start closer to the root. So 
yeah, those are kind of the reasons for it uh, that I do it here and I don't do it every wash day. I just do it if I really want it to uh, last a little bit longer. Val, thanks so much for joining. It's been such a pleasure. When I brush my hair, when wet, it goes frizzy. The curls don't form. Um, what products are you using, I guess, would be my question. Dance party time. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a dual live, exactly. I am not from Western Canada, I'm from Ottawa. Uh, when I water wash, do you leave in conditioner or just styling products? Um, I don't know if I totally know what you're asking there. I very rarely water wash, uh, to be honest with you. Usually I only water wash if it's because I like didn't style my hair on my previous wash day. And then I'm deciding to do a full curly hair routine or like wavy hair routine and I didn't and I don't want to wash my hair. So like that's kind of what I did today. Whereas I did a full shampoo condition two days ago and I was going to do a like full, you know, hour and a half hair routine today. So I just want to make sure I can get at least three or four days out of it before I need shampoo again. So I did a water wash today and today I did all my products today, but I had no product in previously. I hope that answers your question. And I used no products on my hair on my previous wash day. Uh, I guys, if you are on TikTok and go to my playlist intro to wavy hair, there is a really good beginner wavy hair routine that does not involve brush styling. Brush styling is just a, a fun technique that can be very effective. It is by no means necessary. It is, if, if it looks overwhelming and does not seem appealing at all to learn how to do this, don't, you don't need to. It is, if I always say anything with hair, if it doesn't look interesting to learn how to do it, don't. There's probably a different way that can is simpler that you can do. Um, let's see, what did I miss on Instagram? How often are you live? Every single Tuesday at 11 a.m. EST, I go live and it's almost always a full hair routine. Yeah, uh, M, it's every single, I, it's literally in the, on, if you go to my bio on Instagram and on TikTok, it says live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. EST. Um, I have, I've been doing this for months. <laughs> I have flaky scalp. It is advisable to water wash and co-wash between washes. It depends how frequently uh, you wash your hair. Um, you wash mine every seven to eight days. Stupid question. Why is day one called day one? Wouldn't next day be day two? Yeah. Like I consider day one to be the day you wash your hair. If that makes sense. Do you trim your own hair? No. I go to a stylist. How many times do you wash your hair in a week? Two. Like I wash my hair every four to five days. If you have wavy hair, but what curlier products do you recommend? Uh, uh, it depends on your hair, guys. It's so hard to like recommend, like I can't generically recommend products. Um, I, I do love the Less Brands products, uh, but they're not the only products I love. As you guys know, I love the Curlsmith products. I love a lot of Bounce Curl products. Okay, so we are done now. I have added mousse and I have added gel to my hair. I think we might leave it there. I was maybe gonna add a little bit more gel, but I don't know, I think I'm just gonna leave it. I am going to quickly use a microfiber towel to microplop. Now there has been a lot of confusion in my comment section about what I mean Yeah, <laughs> when I say microplop. I know this is gonna be review for a lot of you, but anyways, what products do you use? I found as a curly hair girl, I have to use two different products. I use a lot of different products because it's what I do. Um, but today I used a mousse and a gel. I could have used just this mousse. I could have used just this gel, both to great, great results. But I wanted to use this mousse and I wanted it to last a little bit longer than usual. So I added a little bit of this gel. John Frieda Frizzies, I think it's linked in my bio and Irish Seamoss gel, which I'm totally obsessed with. I have a discount code in my bio as well. Uh, scalp oiling trend. I haven't tried it, but I do use the healthy scalp serum on my scalp almost every day because I do have dry flaky scalp. Okay. So I am going to micro plop. So I very gently, because I don't want to ruin all the hard work that we just did. I don't want to create too much disruption to the definition of my hair. So I just pull it all forward. If your hair is naturally super spirally, 
from the root and volume is not an issue for you and you have tight curls, this is less necessary. For people where you're trying to really encourage the tightness of your curls, this step becomes more relevant. I take a microfiber towel and I start at the bottom and I'm going to gently push up and gently scrunch. This is micro plopping. So it's kind of like putting your hair in a t-shirt towel and doing a full plop, but instead, I'm just gonna do the other side, of doing a full plop, you're doing a mini plop or a micro plop. Some people think that a micro plop is just when I do it with a microfiber towel instead of doing it with a, a uh, regular terry cloth towel. No, <laughs> because the difference being a lot of people take a terry, any towel and just go like they rub their hair. No, no, no. Micro plop is when you are very gently lowering your hair in, gently scrunching to remove any excess water and kind of see how much curlier my hair just got from that quick little scrunch. Okay, how would you add gel to hair after that routine? Um, so you could water down gel in your hands and you could glaze it very gently over and then re-scrunch if you wanted to. Um, I think I already answered about the viral scalp oiling. I haven't done that, but I have used the healthy scalp serum. My hair doesn't curl at the root either. I used brush styling. I used brush curls on the top layer of my hair to make it start closer to the root. And then we use plopping and diffusing to make it artificially start closer to the root. Okay, so now we are pretty much done from there. I could go in with a little bit more gel. I think we're gonna be okay. I think we have enough product in, but I guess we'll find out. Um, now I'm gonna go in with diffusing. Now, you guys know, if you've been here before, I preach the gospel. Not, not of Christianity, <laughs> I'm a witch. I pre preach the gospel of good diffusing technique, <laughs> okay? So let's start by, what was the question? Uh, hair doesn't curl from the root, yeah. So for hair that doesn't curl from the root, you want to uh, brush curl. If, first of all, there's nothing wrong with hair that doesn't curl from the root. It's not necessarily something that doesn't, that has to be fixed and a girl, Oh, sorry, and a girl, sorry, I'm reading your comments at the same time. It's not something that has to be fixed and a good haircut is going to really help. Let me just start by saying if your hair doesn't curl from the root, a good haircut is gonna help. Brush curls is going to really help if you want it to start closer to the root and diffusing is gonna help. Okay. We're gonna start doing that. If you want a little bit more volume at the root, Brush curling, I have a whole playlist called Denman that you can go check out because we're already past that stage, so I can't show you anymore. Uh, it kind of matters what shampoo you use, but that's not the first thing I would change in your routine. So I'm going to pull up right here to get a little bit more volume at my roots. Uh, did I get all those new followers just because I said I was a witch? <laughs> How often do you get white gel flakes in your hair? Typically white gel flakes, if it's from your product, it's the combination of uh, the products that you're using. They don't like each other. You guys are so funny. Okay, I'm going to turn on my diffuser. And I'm bubble diffusing. Yeah, I can see you do love a good witch. That's so funny. So this is bubble diffusing and we're doing this to get nice, lots of root volume, okay? So if you're struggling with your root volume, yes, a good haircut is gonna make a difference, but also this technique makes a really big difference. Ah, uh, you know what, Brittany? It's very possible that your hair, um, that your hair pattern changed when you had babies. It's very normal for pregnancy or different types of um, like hormonal changes or medications to actually change your, your, your hair pattern. Chemo can do that, COVID can change your hair pattern, post-COVID hair loss can change your hair pattern. And once it changes, there's really nothing you can do to really bring it back. Usually that's a new hair pattern. Yeah, exactly, Em. 
so I was telling people earlier, like volume. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. So one of the things I was talking about earlier is when you, uh, I earlier I follow, I took a wash and go course with this amazing curly hair specialist from Manchester. And one of the things she said is people get all worried about burning their hair, whatever heat on their hair. But she said, ultimately blow drying is to a curling iron or straightener what a tumble dryer is to an iron like you're probably not going to burn your clothes in a tumble dryer but you might when you're ironing them so she felt that your normal products your gel stuff like that is going to be enough heat protectant on its own especially if you're just using like a medium heat but you can also use heat protectants, especially silicone free heat protectants. I thought that was a really interesting thing that I learned from this course that I took from Curly Galclo. If somebody wants to drop her name into the comment section. Carolyn, my hair I consider to be wavy, not curly, so. I use heat when I'm blow drying because of the explanation I just gave. What's my background and why do I know all these things? I love that, but do you see how much, just that like bubble diffusing technique creates a little bit of root volume? We're gonna go in and blow dry the rest of it and it'll look more normal, but what is a witch? Honestly, when I say witch, I use the term very eclectically. I won't get into it too much, but I use it to mean I have like a private spiritual practice. I'm not affiliated with private religion um, and my spiritual practice revolves around meditation, setting intention. I do a little bit of manifestation, but not in the really intense way that I know some people do. Uh, when I say, when I talk about magic, I don't believe that I can like cast a spell and make someone do something. For me, magic is more about like when you set an intention and you're regularly using like a chant or a mantra or something like that, you're keeping it so top in, of mind in your life or when you go through the act of casting a spell, like a ritualistic meditation, something like that, you're, you're putting so much energy into focusing on that thing that when opportunities arise in life, you're more likely to see them because you're causing this thing to be so top of mind in your life. So if you were to do like a money spell, you're really making it in your forefront of your mind that I'm seeking opportunities to create more wealth in my life. I'm looking for money. So you're going to be looking that for that in every year. It's like a, a, the confirmation bias, right? You're now looking for areas of your life where money might be able to appear. So it's a self, it's confirmation bias and it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And to me, that's what magic is. And that's why I think spell casting is effective. So for me, I kind of like take some of the fun out of witchcraft because of how I approach it and what, what I believe in it. But that's, that's what it is to me. Um, okay. Uh, yes, this is the Lust Brands hair dryer and diffuser and it is linked in my bio. You can go check it out. Okay, so we did enough of my diffusers there. Um, <laughs> I also feel like we're in a salon together all hanging out. Now I like to switch to hover diffusing. So now I'm going to switch all of my hair forward and I like to go straight to hover diffusing. Now some people like to go straight to pixie diffusing where they cut their hair. If I go to pixie diffusing too quickly, it kind of disrupts my curl pattern and ends up making my spirals not have a chance to like spiral in the way they want to and they get kind of wonky. So I find if I air dry for a little bit first or I almost never do that, but that would be an alternative. Or if I hover diffuse for a little bit first, which is the technique you see me doing here. Hover diffuse is when you just kind of hover the diffuser eight to 10 centimeters away from your hair like this on a high heat. You can go as high as you want with your heat here on a nice high airflow because by the time that heat catches your hair, it's gonna cool down quite a bit. Um, it's gonna kind of mimic like a light breeze and it's gonna give your hair a chance to set in the curl pattern that is most natural. And I don't know, it works really well for my hair. My hair, my routine does not take half the day. It just takes longer when I'm on live because I'm answering all your questions. You hold it in place.
place when you're pixie diffusing, guys. When you're hover diffusing, you're not creating frizz by moving it. It's just pixie diffusing that you want to hold it in place. Oh, if your hair looks like this, do you currently style it? Do you style it wavy? Oh my god, we have so many people with the same hair. I'm so excited. I go live every Tuesday. Let's do our hair together next week. Okay, so again, I'm just going to go all the way around. Mousse and gel creates a nice cast. So if, if you minimally disturb it, so hover diffusing or air dry for a little bit, it should start to have like a little bit of a crunchiness to it once it starts to dry. Ah, oh, that's so awesome. We've got a lot of people in here with hair similar to mine. Um, then it's going to start to have that cast, so it's going to stay nice and frizz free, nice and defined, and a little bit crunchy. And then once that cast starts to set, that's when I like to go in with my pixie diffusing. It takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to diffuse my hair. What products do you recommend? So today we used a leave-in conditioner that was by Curly Hair Designs. This is a local Ottawa-based company. It's linked in my bio. You can definitely check it out. Um, the John Frieda Mousse. This is a drugstore product. Uh, and we used a little bit of my favorite gel. It is the Irish Sea Moss Gel by Les Brands, and I have a discount code for that one. Oh, my arms are getting tired already. That didn't take very long. Okay. So the thing, it's not probably going to take me that long to diffuse my hair today because we use mostly mousse. And mousse does not take very long to dry. And usually I use mostly gel in my hair. So I'm curious to see what the impact is on my dry time. Okay. So, yeah, it already feels like I'm starting to have a cast set. That's wild. Okay, so the outside of my hair is already starting to be pretty dry. It's like not fully dry yet, so I'm already... So you never diffuse, it takes too long. I get it. If I diffuse my hair though, my hair is so much less frizzy that I can wear my hair without refreshing it for three or four days. If I air dry my hair, I almost always have to refresh my hair the next day or at least two days later. So for me, it's worth it to spend the day on day one. I call that putting like curls in the bank. <laughs> I put curls in the bank on wash day and then I withdraw from that deposit for the rest of the week. Okay. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to pixie diffuse. Now I leave it turned off. I put the diffuser in place. I usually put down to a medium heat when I'm doing this and I hold it in position for like 20 to 30 seconds. Okay. This is when you don't want to be moving the diffuser too much because you're going to create frizz you're going to lose some definition. How do you apply the mousse? In sections. And I rake it through with my hands. And then after I apply the mousse, I brush styled. So I brushed through my hair to smooth any wet frizz and then I scrunched. Um, yeah, diffusers are great. This is uh, the blow dryer and the diffuser I purchased. Well, sorry, they were gifted to me. They come together from less brands. Thank you so much. Okay, so we did one section, cut the hair. Now they're pixie diffusing. Now there's something that I call manic pixie diffusing that I think is the first thing people always do the first time they pick up a diffuser. And I'm gonna do it when my hair is a little bit more dry. But it's, actually I'm gonna do it now to show you. But people, the first time they pick up a diffuser, this is always what they do. That is manic pixie diffusing. Stop it. Stop doing that. <laughs> it's like the constant movement. Don't do that. You are going to, unless, oh, sorry, let me take a step back. If you like the results you get from doing it, of course, keep doing it. Don't listen to me. However, if you are currently doing that and you are one of those people who comes into my DMs and says, you keep telling me to diffuse my hair, but I can't diffuse my hair. It leaves my hair frizzy and it's giant and stringy and I don't like it and I don't like the results, I just can't diffuse my hair. I'm gonna, the first question is gonna be, are you manic pixie diffusing or are you using other diffusing techniques? Uh, 
What would you recommend for curly hair? But it starts off straight and then full on curls. I don't know what that means. Did anybody just get called out by Manic Pixie Diffusing? <laughs> Did I just change your life? So I would experiment with Hover Diffusing and Pixie Diffusing. Experiment one time, try Hover Diffusing first and then Pixie Diffuse. And then the next time, try Pixie Diffusing first and then Hover Diffusing. Yeah, we called some people out, eh? So what do you suggest for curl clumping? Technique, okay? So you want to apply your product to very, very wet hair and then try brush styling. That's one way to do it. I also have a playlist called Intro to Wavy Hair that you can go check out. It only has one video in it right now, but in that video, there's a really good technique that doesn't involve brush styling that will also help you to clump your hair. It, it's kind of like the bowl method. The bowl method can help too. So if your hair is straight at the top and then it's curly at the bottom of the hair, so that what you're saying is the curl doesn't start at the root. That means you have wavy hair. Even if your spirals, it's, you're saying you have ringlets, you have spirals that start a few inches down or maybe one or two inches away from the root, I think is what you're saying. That's way you're describing wavy hair. Um, so my hair is like that in many sections. So a lot of my hair routines would be great for you to follow. Um, if you want to follow someone with even less curly hair than mine, someone uh, wavy curly alley is another phenomenal person you can follow with really great techniques. Uh, what heat are you on, medium or high? Uh, what's the difference between wavy and curly hair? I'm not an authority on that, frankly. I, I'm kind of debating stopping talking about that topic. My wet hair is curly, but when I go to diffuse, the curls drop and become wavy. Um, are you using Stronghold products? Lacey, that would be my first question for you. Like, are you using a curl cream? If you're using a curl cream, I would stop using curl cream altogether and I would just replace it with a gel. I would only use a gel <laughs> or only use a mousse. Try that to start. Um, when did you start doing these routines for your hair? About three years ago. Is your hair naturally curly? It's naturally wavy. Do you use heat protectant? No. Uh, and the reason I don't use heat protectant um, I used to use a leave-in conditioner that had built-in heat protectant, but I just took a wash-and-go course with Curly Gal Flo, if somebody wants to drop her name in the comments. And, uh, oh, somebody asked a question. Anyways, I'll finish, sorry, on Instagram. I'll come to you in a sec. But uh, I just took a wash-and-go course on with Curly Gal Flo, who is a Manchester curly hair stylist. And she says that... Blow drying your hair is like a diffuser is to a curling iron or straightener what a tumble dryer is to a clothing iron. So she's like the likelihood of you burning your hair from a blow dryer even on like especially on a medium heat is very very low. So I use a high heat when I'm hover diffusing and I typically go to a medium heat when I'm pixie diffusing and I don't use she she feels that the gel is going to be enough heat protectant on its own. I'm sure that is a controversial opinion. I don't know. Um there was a question over here. Sorry, I missed it. Is this gonna be recorded? Yes, I can repost it to my YouTube. Any recommendations for any for someone with curlier hair to follow? Yes, uh, Curl Vitality, um, Mal, Mains by Mel. Um, those are a few. My shark diffuser would be burning my scalp by now, even on low heat and medium speed. Oh, okay, well, then it depends on the heat, I'm sure, of your diffuser. Okay, so, one second, I've got... So pixie diffusing is when you take your diffuser, I like to leave it turned off while I put it in position. Then I put it in position, I lower the hair into it, then I turn it on, and I hold that position for like 20 to 30 seconds. And I put it on a medium heat while I'm doing this. And somebody did make a good point on Instagram. They said, oh, like my shark diffuser would be burning my scalp. Yeah, like different diffusers are gonna have different heat points. That's a good point. Like use good logic. If you think your diffuser is like way hotter than other diffusers, maybe stay to a lower medium heat. Sure, especially if you don't think you need to use those higher heat points. But I don't know, that was what this curly hair specialist said. So I thought that was interesting. I find my curls getting too clumpy when I brush my hair away from my scalp. Any tips? 
uh, break up the curl clumps uh, with like a wide tooth comb. Uh, you subscribe to my YouTube. Awesome. I'll repost the live guys over there. Uh, you just don't know how to style it. Can you flip to one side and style for us, please? Um, I will when I'm done styling, if that's what you mean, when I'm done blow drying. I feel like my hair is turning out weird today. Eh? Does anybody else? I guess we'll see how the results look. What was the name of the person that has less curly hair than you? Um, Al Wavy Curly Alley. Cameron is another one with fine hair. Cameron Curls, I think is her name. C-A-M-R-Y-N. How do you keep your curls fresh in between wash days? I sleep with my hair on a silk scarf. Um, good questions, though. Hi, friends. You have wet frizz. So wet frizz, if it's from unhealthy hair, then you want to heal your hair. Wet frizz can be caused by an imbalance of protein or moisture, like if you're in moisture overload or protein overload. I do have a guide that you can check out about protein or moisture overload that can be really helpful. If you go to the link in my bio and scroll all the way to the bottom, there's some free resources there that you can go check out. Okay, earlier I was talking about manic pixie diffusing, guys. If you pick up a diffuser and immediately go like this, this is called manic pixie diffusing. This is a great way to break your cast. <laughs> but if you complain that you don't like the lack of definition that you get, or if it causes your hair to be stringier than you would like, or creates little frizzies or anything like that, then move away from that and try pixie diffusing or hover diffusing. What's the difference between curly and wavy hair because your hair looks curly to me? I am not an authority on this topic, guys. I do have a video that I linked in my bio. If you scroll to the very bottom where I put free resources, I linked somebody else's video where she talks a little bit about this topic um, under the like lens of overtyping and why overtyping can be harmful, but I am not an authority on this topic. I think ultimately it comes down to the fact that if you ask 10 people, where the line is between wavy and curly, you will get 10 different answers. Um, the definition that I work off of, of what wavy hair is, is that wavy hair is S waves or spirals, where not all of the spirals or S waves start directly at the root, and where the curl has a tendency to loosen over time. I also am very careful to type hair on unstyled hair that has been air dried with no product because there's no point in typing someone based on how good they are at styling their hair. We want to type someone all evenly. Um, if you want to see what my hair looks like when it is not fully styled, you can go check out my story and you will see exactly what it looks like when it's unstyled. You will see it is significantly less curly than what you are seeing here. It's really shocking actually. So anyways, that is the definition that I go off of. But like I said, I am not an authority on this issue. That is why I linked someone else's video up there, but also she's not an authority on this issue either. So I'm very careful to be aware of that. <laughs> um, yeah. I am just really good at making my hair look curlier than it is. So if that's something you want to learn about, you're in the right place. How can you get your hair curls to be defined from the roots? Um, brush styling can really help. Diffusing can really help. Uh, yeah, guys, you can talk, go to five different spe curly hair specialists and they will tell you that my hair is curly versus wavy. Like five of them will give you five different answers. We can get overly pressed about this. I go with wavy. It's not a big deal. One sec. What do you change in the winter to save your hair from frizz? So when it rains. Well, where I live, we don't get rain in the winter. We get snow. <laughs> However, um, if you, you, you want to use gels that are going to provide humidity and moisture resistance, that's one thing. Something like the Love Your Curls Lust Brands Irish Sea Moss Gel is going to be great for that. Another product that would be really great is the Advanced Climate Control Heat and Humidity Gel. Um, and you want to use enough of that gel. You also want to make sure that your hair is wet enough when you are applying that gel. When you're applying any moisture-loving products, especially products that contain ingredients like glycerin, make sure your hair is wet enough. 
Otherwise, your, those ingredients are gonna look for that moisture from the environment after your hair is fully styled. What products did you put in your hair today? That's a great question. We might as well go through that. I did add a local Ottawa-based company, the leave-in conditioner that smells amazing, curly hair designs, uh, leave-in conditioner, which is linked to my bio if you want to support local for Christmas. Um, I also added the John Frieda Frizz Ease Dream Curls Mousse, which is a nice little drugstore purchase. I also did my favorite gel, a very small amount of the Love Your Curls Irish Sea Moss Gel, one of my faves. Um, okay, how are we doing? Are we dry? God, I love mousse. It dries so fast. Oh my God, it dries so fast. Okay, so lately I have been finding that I don't really need oil to break my cast. And I was asking um, Curly Gal Clo at the Wash and Go, that I, Wash and Go tutorial class that I attended with her, Curly Gal Clo, if you wanna drop it in the comments, is the curly hair stylist specialist from Manchester who had a virtual Wash and Go tutorial class that I attended on Sunday. She's gonna have more coming up. I'll let you guys know so you can attend it next time. Um, and she said that uh, if you have tighter curls, she recommends not fully breaking your cast on wash day because that way you'll get like seven days out of your style. If you have looser curls, you probably do want to fully break your cast because otherwise it kind of um, ruins the look a little bit and ruins your volume. Um, but she still felt that typically with the right products, you, you usually can break the cast just with your hands and a diffuser doing pixie diffusing. Um, and if not to use like something like verb ghost oil, like a very light serum, but typically she doesn't add oil to people's hair at the end, which is so interesting. A lot of this information that she talked about was actually very different than a lot of the stuff that Barbara from Pearl Vitality has talked about. So I found that interesting because I really respect Barbara. And I think part of that comes from the fact that Curly Gal Clo's specialty is very, I think she primarily works with tighter curl patterns. I think Barbara primarily works with looser curl patterns. I, that's my theory of where some of it comes from, but I don't know. Let's see what questions I just missed. Thank you for people who just tagged her. When I use oil to break the cast, it makes my hair look wet so I don't bother now. Not everybody, like I've stopped using oil to break my cast. Um, how long does it take you to diffuse your hair? Depends on the products I use, typically 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, so what does scrunching out the crunch mean or scrunching out the cast? The cast is that like shiny wet look finish that you get from using gel or mousse and scrunching it out means once your hair is 100% dry, scrunching your hair until that like wet shiny look goes away. Yeah, I've always used oil to scrunch out the crunch, but I don't know, like I'm really uh, drawn to Curly Gallo clothes, like approach of using fewer products, less techniques. I use, uh, it's not really a cream, it's like a leave-in conditioner, mousse and then gel. Yeah, and I wouldn't usually use a leave-in conditioner if today had been wash day, but I washed my hair two days ago and didn't apply any product, so I just wanted to use a little leave-in conditioner to be able to detangle. Oil helps your gel get better holes. That's really unusual. As a rule, that's something specific to those specific products because typically oil would break the hold of your product. That's why we use oil to break the cast. So that would be super unusual and something specific just to the products you're using in general. Do you prefer gel or mousse? Which first, I typically do gel, uh, mousse before gel. Um, and I, my, my favorite hair routine is just gel. No leave-in conditioner, nothing, just gel on its own. But I love to do all sorts of combinations and today, and I do also love just mousse on its own, but I don't get a lot of longevity when I do just mousse on its own. So that's why today I wanted to do a mousse routine, but I did a, lot of, a little bit of gel with it. It's just to get a little bit more.
Uh, do you think the oil is helpful when first starting out when the hair isn't as healthy? Helpful in what way? Uh, I know oil can be helpful if you're really struggling, like in Florida with frizz. I think oil, in theory, should be able to help your hair like seal in moisture and prevent from taking on like humidity, in theory. Um, so I'm using a medium heat right now, but I do use high heat when I'm hover diffusing. Okay, let's let's see what we're working with, guys. I don't know, we haven't looked yet. My hair is so soft. That John Frieda mousse and the Irish sea moss gel both leave. So let's start. You can see very, very juicy clumps. Give you a little natural daylight. Very juicy clumps, not too frizzy. Even in natural daylight, which usually shows frizz really badly, you can see not too bad. My lower back, okay. These jeans, okay. Oh, my lower back. Okay. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. The brush curls are given. Okay, we got juicy clumps that we wanna break up a little bit. You can see I always have one, these bangs on this side are always naughty. Naughty, naughty. Do you dilute the gel with water when I apply it? Yes. So now what I'm gonna do is sit down and kind of like arrange this, especially the brush curls. How do you get waves to start closer to the root? Diffusing your hair and brush curls are gonna be the best way. Now, you are not married to your results. A lot of people don't realize this, but there are ways to fix your results. The easiest way is to use a curling iron. I know, sacrilege. Use a little bit of heat protectant if you're gonna use a curling iron. Um, but uh, that is definitely the easiest way. And frankly, I heard our Richie Raymond stylist say this the other day. But he's like, you know, if you are going to re-diffuse a whole like 10 inch section of your head on a high heat to fix one tiny curl, you might as well just use a curling iron on that one tiny curl. And that made me think, do you think better quality hair dryers have an effect on curls? I have no idea. Is my hair natural? I would not call this natural. This is heavily manipulated, but I did not use a curling iron. If you find this helpful, guys, don't forget to give me that double tap. It helps me so much. Um, uh, how is your hair so soft with mousse? Mousse should leave your hair soft. Do you have frizz ease mousse? It should leave you with a crunchy finish that you then scrunch away. Okay, so um, let's see. This is the only part that I'm not happy with. So what I'm going to, but this is typical. And the reason for it guys is because I have like a crown right there. Um, so it always does this. So what I'm gonna do is just very lightly spray it. This is why we love our infinity spray bottles. And there would be a couple of options. Uh, <laughs> I would call that natural. Maybe, but someone with like spirally hair that has curl that like spirals from here wouldn't call it natural, right? So we have to find that balance to make sure that like I'm accurately describing my hair. Uh, yeah, the mousse should scrunch out and should leave you with nice soft hair. Yeah. Exactly. So yours is like mine, like this naturally. There you go. So mine is not like this naturally. And guys, if you want to see what my hair looks like naturally, check out my story. Go to my story and you will see how not like this my hair is when it is air dried with no product. It is very, very different. And that's why I leave that in my stories so that you can get an accurate representation of like how much this is the result of heavy manipulation. And I've started really doing that on my lives because I think it helps you guys understand what is really possible. But you know, it takes time. Like this was a pretty elaborate routine. So there you go. So you're not married to your results. If you're unhappy with one little section, like all of this, I'm fine with this. I think that looks good. I just really didn't like that one little area. Now this, I dampened it slightly. I just brush curled it. Now I could pin curl this and leave this for a couple of minutes. I might even just leave it like this and that might be enough to leave it happy. Um, what are some of these questions here? Cowlick in the front. Pin curls can really help with cowlicks. Um, 
What shampoo and conditioner do you like? I prefer the Lust Brands shampoo and conditioner. Hairstyle ideas, I've got a whole playlist. Um, my hair still feels, looks wet after you diffuse, even though it feels dry and the cast is broken. The products you're using are probably way too heavy for your hair. That is a like keystone indicator that the products you're using are too heavy for your hair. So, I mean, I wish I had a um, bobby pin. Let me just grab a bobby pin. I'm gonna quickly pin this to show you how I would address a cowlick, okay? I'll be right back. We got one. I love it when you keep bobby pins everywhere. What are pin curls? Okay, I'm gonna show you. So we've got, this is okay. You can see the curl is really starting to loosen down here and like, I don't know, she's just being annoying. This little baby right here likes to be really annoying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to manipulate this curl to make it do what I want it to do. Thank you. Um, I am going to wrap it around my finger. Now you want the size of this circle to match the kind of size of the rest of the curls, okay? If you make it too tight, this is gonna be tighter than all the rest of your curls. And you see how loose the curls are on this side? So I want this side to be pretty loose too, okay? I want it to go like that. Okay, so I'm doing two fingers width. You can buy little tools to do this too. Okay, I've got a bunch of really detailed tutorials if you're trying to do curls with a Demi brush, brush curls, um, that like really break it down. There's some of the more detailed, like two minute long tut tutorials on how to do one brush curl. So definitely check those out if you're struggling with brush curls. And then I run the bobby pin through the roots on my hair and through there, okay? And now you could just go about, like my hair is done now, I could just go fold laundry and leave that for 15 minutes, or you could diffuse it a little bit. Be careful, if you diffuse it too long, you're gonna make it, again, curlier than all the rest of your head. So it's like kind of finding that like science of like how long to leave it in for to get it to match the rest of your head, but you'll get used to it once you've done it once or twice. Hello, used your blow drying technique and it really worked, amazing. Any tips for shorter hair? Brush curls typically don't work well for shorter hair. Um, you might just want to like just brush through your hair and sometimes you can scrunch a little bit. Um, but no, I've never had really short hair so I want to like limit how much advice I give because really, I don't know. I mean, it's not firsthand advice. Is a Demon brush the best brush to use with wavy or curly hair? It's one of the good ones. It is a little bit more expensive but I did buy mine. It was not gifted to me. I do really like it. If you're on a budget though, you can absolutely use the paddle brush that you have from Dollarama. I tried pin curls but struggled getting my fingers out. Pin, wrap it loose, loosely around your fingers. Um, and you can diffuse it if it, you're struggling to keep it in long enough. What products do you use? Just starting out, starting to, so today we use um, the, well, we used a little bit of leave-in conditioner, the Curly Hair Designs leave-in conditioner, which is an Ottawa-based company. Shout out to Paula Whitelock at Curly Hair Designs. Um, and then we used, which is linked in my bio, by the way, and then we used Frizz E's John Frida, uh, which is a mousse, which a mousse is fun because even though it doesn't, the style won't last as long, it dries really quick. So depending on what your needs are, that can be nice. To make it last a little bit longer, I did use some of the Irish Sea Moss Love Your Curls gel, which is my, you know, you guys know I love this gel. She's my fave. Miss Jessie's Pillow Soft Curls in my water bottle for next day curls is amazing. Love it. What kind of diffuser do it did I use? The Love Your Curls Lust Brands, which is linked in my bio. I have a discount code for y'all too. It was on sale for Black Friday. I don't know if it still is. Uh, struggling with a cowlick on the front of your head. We were just talking about cowlicks. Try a pin curl in that one area. Naturally curly hair. If mine is too soft, if mine is too soft, more frizzy, any suggestions? It's gonna come down to technique and I would avoid any like moisturizing products. Just stick to a good gel um, and it's gonna come down to technique. So like brush to smooth that frizz and then have really good diffusing technique. Selena, I feel like you're just out here answering everyone's questions. Thanks, girl. What do you want to do to your hair after the gym when you don't wanna wash it? I am gonna have the ultimate gym hair refresh video coming up because I work out like six days a week. So I am going to, and I obviously have to have like decent hair most of the time because I'm making content for y'all. 
Um, so I'm going to make like a long video about this. Like it's going to be like a three minute video where I go through all of my, why is there so many, there's never shadows here. Like what is happening? There's like really bad shadows right now. It's so weird. Um, do you have tips to prevent frizz on tight curls for a seven year old? Uh, she's so self-conscious. Yeah. Use gel. And when you're styling, just smooth the wet frizz. And then if, you, if she can tolerate diffusing, it's a good idea. Or you can get a, if you can invest getting a diffusing, like, um, you like a head that she can just sit under and like scroll in an iPad or something. Those are great. Um, what silk scarves do you recommend? Uh, if you can thrift one. That is what I recommend. Currently, I'm using the last one. When will the gym video be posted? It's not filmed yet, so probably this week. Um, currently, I'm using the Lust Brands satin one. Um, okay. Let's see if I left this pin in too long. She's so cute. I left it in a little bit too long. Why does everybody keep thinking Selena? I feel like she's just in here like answering everybody's questions like the queen she is. Okay, so it's a little tight right now, but it's going to loosen, and that is so much better than it was. Now, the one thing I will mention with pin curls that I didn't mention before is you need the pin curl to be clean when you're wrapping it around your finger, because if it's all wonky when you wrap it around your finger, it's going to come out all wonky. So you need to like very nicely wrap it around your finger. Hard water is ruining your waves. Uh, I would go to a hairstylist and get them to do a hard water treatment on your hair on a periodic basis. Uh, love you, Selena. You're a queen. Uh, hi, sunflower. Yeah, 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 sorry. Um, yeah, I'm on, I'm live on Instagram and TikTok right now. I know that can be confusing, but TikTok's my primary platform, but I just like, I have like a special little connection because with my Instagram, by the way, guys, you can uh, DM me on Instagram. People don't realize that. Don't DM me on uh, TikTok because I can't respond to you unless I follow you back and I can't follow back all of my audience. So just DM me on Instagram so that we can actually correspond. Also, you can send me pictures of your hair on Instagram and you can't do that on TikTok. So like it's a waste of time for us to correspond on TikTok. Follow me on Instagram. DM me on Instagram. We can chat over there if you have questions about your hair. I do. I make a really big effort to like actually take the time to help people. Um, I don't charge anything for it because I am not a hairstylist. Save your money for a curly hair specialist who is a hairstylist. What to do for flat hair that keeps falling in your face? You want it to stay up. Uh, oh, that is not enough information. Like, do you have wavy hair? Do you have curly hair? Could I put the gel in while she is in the bath? She doesn't tolerate it much. Yeah, totally. How do you sleep on your hair? Silk pillowcase? No, I sleep with my hair in a silk scarf. And I, I have a playlist called Protecting Curls, I think, that shows you how I tie my silk scarf. I also sometimes wear a silk uh, sleep cap. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a lot of tips for straight hair because I don't really wear my hair straight. Okay, let me shake out my hair now. Although, did anybody see the last time I straightened my hair? I straightened it for Halloween because I went as Morticia. Has anybody watched Wednesday Addams? It's so good. I just binge watched the whole thing. I don't like the casting of, um, of Gomez. They should have casted Remy Malik. Remy Malik, I, he probably wouldn't have taken it because he takes like really like acting roles, but Remy Malik would have been such a good Gomez. Ah! My husband was like, so what is she like a witch? And I'm like, yeah, she's a witch. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Oh, you're so sweet. It was about my hair, but we're done my hair now. Yeah, we totally. Okay, if you haven't watched the Wednesday show, yes, it is for children, but it, it holds up. My husband, who never, like, he hated the Sabrina show that they redid. He's like, this is for children. It's stupid. And he liked the Wednesday Addams. He's like, they did a good amount of darkness to this. It's like decent. He actually liked the Wednesday Addams show. So, oh, uh, team Tyler or Xavier. I mean, obviously we were all on team Tyler for a moment. But I don't want to do any spoilers. There was not enough episodes for sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah, she is a queen. 
how good would Remy Malik have been, right? Like, and it's not that the guy who played Gomez was bad, but it's just like, there's supposed to be a certain like chemistry between Morticia and Gomez. And it just like was lacking a little bit. I'm watching Wednesday right now. Okay, I, don't, I won't do any giveaways. We were all on Team Tyler at one point. I know it's like devastating. You didn't like it, Samantha, leave the live. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, you're gonna dye your hair blue. Any tips for taking care of it after? Yeah, you probably your hair will probably need protein afterwards. Uh, you didn't like the casting for Gomez either. I also didn't like the, the casting for Fet for cousin, what's his name? But young Gomez and Morticia are so good, I know. She uses, okay, what, what am I missing here? She uses the less towel, but you can use a t-shirt, totally. I like the Gomez was based off the comic book character more. Oh, was he? Okay, I didn't know that. Still though, I, I just watched the old, uh, like the original Adams family, I think it was. I don't know if it was the original. It was like an old one though. And Gomez is like so charismatic and like he's so handsome and like, I don't know, I liked that version of him. I think it was like the 90s or 80s version of the Adams family. And I was just like, I don't know. I like was hoping for that. Uncle Fester. Yeah, he is in Brooklyn 99. Yeah, I I don't know. I didn't I didn't love his interpretation of Fester, but Wednesday was an impeccable actress. She did such a good job. I thought all of all of the like Catherine Zeta Jones is a queen. Okay. Ooh, should we do a side part? I don't know. I wasn't going to. But maybe we should. I go live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, whatever your time uh, zone is. So I hope that I will see you all. I know we're winding down here. This was supposed to be a middle part, but I'm kind of vibing the side part. Yeah, definitely hit that follow button if you haven't already, because I wanted, I honestly want to know what you all think of the Wednesday Adams <laughs> entire series. I'm sad that it's not coming out every week because we could have talked about it. I've already binged the crap out of it. Okay, but if you need a recommendation for what to watch next that we can talk about next week, it's a little bit less family friendly. Chippendales? Chippendales. There's only two episodes out so far. Oh my god. It's so good. Okay. Side part is looking good. I'm really liking it. Okay, this was it with the not side part. Oh goodness. Oh, she's mad now. Mm. This is when a hair oil is gonna be handy. Just, there we go. Oh, okay. The side part's better, eh? Chippendales is about the people who, I don't know if you know what Chippendales is, but it's like a female strip club. And, it, or sorry, like it's a, it's a club for women where men are dancing. But it's about the founder. It's about like the person who started the first club. And it's like a series about them. But anyways, super good. Yeah, yeah, side part. Okay, y'all have spoken. Now it's not gonna look as good because I've messed it up probably. Yeah, it's definitely a side part day. I agree. I don't know why my hair is being like that. Um, okay, we will definitely post this live. John Austin, yeah. Um, hi from Portugal. Woo woo. Okay, thanks so much for joining, guys. That was an awesome live. I'm gonna post the full live to my YouTube if you wanna go check out the replay, if you wanna do what we did today. Hey, girl, how's it going, Joyful Imp? I haven't seen you in a while. Um, no, not Chippendale. Chippendales. Chippendales, like the club. It's, uh, there's only two episodes so far. Wednesday is so good. Oh, I'm not gonna tell you what's going on with Tyler. You have to finish crushing it. Hi from California. Um, if you haven't hit that follow button, guys, do it already. I go live every single Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. You can Google what that is in your time zone. Uh, and honestly, it's the highlight of my week. I don't know. This was a really good live, though. This was a lot of fun. Thanks, Crystal. Um, the side part. Usually my hair, I'm not sure about the side part, but it's a vibe this week. So we're kind of doing that. Also, 
I am going to for coffee today with a curly hair specialist who is local to me just to like learn a little bit from her, go for coffee, like learn a little bit about the industry, little Easter egg in there for anybody who stuck around that long. So do with that info what you will. Um, thank you. So, okay. Well now we're just in like a gratuitous compliment, uh, party now. Uh, can you switch to noon so I can catch on my lunch? Oh, well, I'm still live by then. Just join during your lunch. Like it's right now it's 1250. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. I should probably hop off now. Uh, this has been super fun. I will see you guys next week. Uh, some things that will be coming up this week as far as content, or at least that I'm hoping, um, is going to be coming up this week is one of them. I really want to make like a longer masterclass about, um, how to style, uh, like hair during a gym refresh so that you don't, cause I, I truly believe you don't have to shampoo your hair every day just because you'd work out every day. I work out every single day and like, I push it. Like I work out pretty hard every, almost every single day. Um, and that you guys know, I only wash my hair like every five days. So that's one video. Uh, oh, that's awesome, Mel. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, another video that I'm going to try and put out this weekend is like a definitive longer video about refreshes separate from the uh, gym refresh video, which is going to be more tailored to that. But like a longer video about refreshes and like how to make your hair last beyond that day one of wash day. Um, and that's going to be part of the intro to wavy hair series, right? So we have the first video that's already come out. It's your intro to wavy hair, your first wavy hair routine. You can find it in my playlist, uh, intro to wavy hair. Video one is already up. Uh, on Instagram, I don't know if it's in a highlights reel, but if it's not, it's one of the most recent videos in the last 15 videos or so that you can see. Um, so that's some stuff that's coming up. If you always want to be able to get like a monthly roundup of what I consider to be like the highest value, like things that I've kind of learned about like the wavy or curly hair industry in the last month and the highest value pieces of content that I've had in the last month. There, I do have a newsletter that's like in its infancy right now. You can register for it. It's going to be roughly once a month. If you go to the link in my bio, you can register for it. Like I said, it's very much in its infancy. So right now it's mostly going to be like a roundup of like the the my what I consider to be my highest value videos. This last month, what it was, was like videos that all surrounded around how to control frizz. So you had a bunch of videos in one place that specifically answered the question, how do I get rid of frizz? How do I control frizz? So there's going to be like a theme like that every time I send out a newsletter so that if the newsletter is really like helping you with a specific pain point, you can kind of bookmark it and have all that resource in one place. Um, Cause I know sometimes it can be hard to be like, oh, I swear I saw that TikTok video. Where was it? Yeah. So that's kind of the idea behind it. Oh, I'm glad you're excited about it. Okay. So that's going to be the idea behind the newsletter. Um, although I think eventually it is going to start having like wider information from like the wider wavy and curly hair, uh, community, because I want to be connecting you guys to like the best information. And I am not a curly or wavy hair specialist. And just like the amount of information I am learning right now, like I want to be connecting you guys to that information. So that's what the newsletter is going to be morphing into. If you're interested in signing up for that, definitely do that. You can do that at the link in my bio. I'm not going to spam you. It's going to be maybe one. Well, it's going to be once a month, roughly, maybe less than that, because I might miss the odd one. <laughs> uh, and other than that, I will see you next Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining Instagram. Way to show up. This was like awesome. Thank you so much for your engagement this week, and I will be back next week. Bye. Um, and live. Yeah, I can answer that question, uh, in the nicest way possible. <laughs> um, sure. Like the term wavy versus curly, I'm no authority on whether my, like what the true definition is of that word. There is a video linked in my bio. If you go to the link in my bio and scroll all the way to the bottom, I do have a list of like a few free resources. And one of them is a video about overtyping and it talks about, you know, why overtyping can be harmful. And that's one of the main reasons that I identify with my hair uh, as wavy. Um, because there are a lot of different ways that you can define wavy hair or um, curly hair. And so because there is some ambiguity and some people would describe my hair as wavy and some people would describe my hair as curly and 
it doesn't hurt me at all to describe my hair as wavy. In fact, it can, it helps me in a lot of ways because it connects me to a lot of techniques and, and products that are right for my hair. So I describe my hair as wavy. So that's kind of like the long and the short of it. If you want to see that video, you can go to the link in my bio, scroll to the bottom and check out that video about over typing. Um, but yeah, I describe also the other thing you can do is check out my story and you can see what my hair looks like when it's unstyled with no product and air dried. And you'll see it, my hair doesn't look like this. I'm just really good at making my hair look a lot curlier than it is. So that's kind of like the longer explanation. Um, I hope that answers your question. But anyways, I go live every Tuesday and I, I hope you join next time and you can see exactly the full hair routine. But if you want to see what I did this time, I am going to post this full live replay to my YouTube. I have a whole playlist of full live replays. So if you want to, you know, one wash day, pull up one of these lives and follow it along and kind of skip through it. My most recent live replay from last Tuesday, which was a sponsored live where I used all Lust brand products. So if you ordered that full live kit, that full uh, ultimate curl kit from Lust and you wanna be able to follow along and use those products on your wash day, then you can use that and I added timestamps in the description so that you can really like skip through it and we can do our hair together. And moving forward, I'm gonna try and add those timestamps in when I upload them to YouTube to make it a little bit easier to skip through these lives if you wanna watch them in the replay. But anyways, thanks so much for joining guys. I do go live every Tuesday at 11, at 11 a.m. Okay, bye.